Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to talk to you about performing password audits using Lovecraft. And um, if you are a system administrator in a company, most likely you're going to have to or you have done password audits in the past. And there are different reasons why you have to do this. Uh, the most important reason or one of the main reasons why companies do such a thing is because they are subject to audits from third parties or they have to comply with different compliance. For instance, HIPAA uh, requires you to have certain password settings and the same thing with PCI or if you're following a uh, framework for cybersecurity, let's say uh, NIST or ISO they also uh, give you guidance to uh, have a strong password. So we're going to be talking about uh, password settings and then doing password audits. But uh, briefly, let's go over a Windows 10 computer. And this is similar in the whole Windows environment. Uh, of course, once you have a domain, you're going to have the group policy objects that you're going to be able to edit and you're going to have more settings and I'll create another video for that. But the concept is going to be the same uh, here. As you could see when you open the uh, local security policy, in this case for your Windows computer, you're going to have a uh, password policy. Um, when you open up the password policy, you're going to have the different or you're going to see the different settings you can configure on it. Uh, the uh, if you want to enforce password history, uh, maximum password length, minimum password length, so on and so forth. Uh, the good thing about uh, this screen is that if you double click on any of the policy settings, for instance, enforce password history, and you don't know what that is, you can click on explain and it is going to tell you what that specific setting does. So um, for uh, most uh, secure environments uh, or for best practices, I should say, you are going to be implementing these settings as a, of minimum password age, uh, a uh, maximum password age, minimum password length. Uh, you may be able to enforce password history. That's also a best practice. But um, passwords, I mean, like these policies are good and I advise you to implement it if you have not done so yet. But in reality, um, it does not offer much protection with the latest password cracking tools and and technology out there. Uh, I always advise you that you would need multi-factor authentication to have a very strong secure system. Uh, but if you don't have the ability to implement multi-factor authentication by all means implement these policies. Now, that being said, as I mentioned to you earlier, there may be regulatory compliance for you when it comes to password settings. And part of that regulatory compliance may be for you to perform password audits on your systems, even if you have uh, these um, settings, it may be that a password that a user is creating for the user account may fall within the cracks of this. And for instance, if you only implement a um, minimum password length, which is one of the most common policies out there of eight characters, and there is a reason for that because the password instead of being N NT is going to be NTLM or vice versa, I forgot. But if you do a minimum of eight characters, it doesn't mean the password is secure. You could have one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight as your password and that meets the criteria, but it's not a secure password. 
right? So in that case, you might want to implement password complexity where the system is going to force users to create a complex password or a password that re it contains uh, these uh, settings in here. But even then, it's going to be an alphanumerical password and is subjected to password cracking tools. So again, that's when two-factor authentication comes into place and that's why you would like to perform password audits on your system. So one of the uh, tools, there are many tools out there for you to use. One of the tools that you can use for that is Lovecrack. So I already have it installed on my system. So let me uh, bring it in here. Uh, you can download it right from their website. Uh, they do have a trial version that you can use and that's what I'm using right here. As you can see, I have a uh, 15 days trial and I'm going to use the trial for video demonstration purposes. So once I open the application, I click on proceed with trial. And since it is the first time and maybe you are new to it, I would advise you to select the password auditing wizard if that's what you want to do now. And when you do that, it's going to be very intuitive and simple to follow. Uh, something that you have to keep in mind is that if your target operating system is going to be Windows or Unix, uh, you select that. In my case, I'm going to be doing this on a Windows desktop computer. I'm going to click next and this is where it becomes interesting and useful and this is one of the uh, that's why I call this a best practice you really want to implement this in your organization and make it a process and maybe have it in your policies right to perform password audits once a year or you know as, as often as, as it may be required for you in this case, for this video, I'm going to be doing the password uh, audits on this local machine, but you could do it on a remote computer. Uh, if you're using a Windows environment, right, you can uh, do the audit on your domain controllers or one of your domain controllers or a, a server or any other computer. But if you're going to be doing that on a remote computer, of course, you do need to know the credentials, the administrative cred credentials to connect to that computer. So you can type that information uh, here in this section. Uh, but I'm going to go back to local computer. I'm going to click on next. Uh, okay, I'm going to use the logged in credentials for this because I am logged in as an admin on this local computer. And then once you get to the uh, section where you have to choose the audit type, it's up to you to decide what you would like to do. Do you want to do a quick audit, common through, or strong password audits? And depending on your setting, that's going to take an different le different length of time to complete as you um, as you can imagine uh, completing a strong password audit it says right here that it can take up to 24 hours to go through all the permutations and the tests that it is going to do but if you want to do that, you have to make sure that your hardware is capable of handling that type of GPU power to crack the passwords. Or you could do a through password auditing or common passwords. And obviously, if you read what each type is, you're going to understand what it's going to do for you. In this case, I'm going to do a, a through password audit. Uh, it says that, you know, it's going to... Uh, look for word lists, smalls, gonna no limits, 24 hours maximums, blah blah blah. It's gonna have different permutations. So you could do it. I'm gonna click next. And then you have the option of um, 
selecting if you want to export that result, uh, the result to a CSV file and then just select the uh, location of the CF CSV file right here and this is um, uh, useful if you are being audited or if you have to submit proofs to management or to or again or to auditors I mean like a, a lot of people don't think about password audits or management until the auditors come knocking at the door and then they have to produce all this evidence right but you know that's a good thing about this application it produces the evidence for you so just go here and I'm going to run this manually and I'm going to do finish. So yes, I want to trust this. So this is going to start cracking right now. As you could see here, it downloaded the NTLM hashes and it's going through the process of trying to crack the passwords based on the uh, password lists and its permutations that it has now because of the password that I the passwords that I chose they're not complex passwords but there's no way I'm gonna let this video run maybe for 25 minutes for this thing to crack it so I'm gonna put an end to this video because what's gonna happen here is that once it goes through this process, if it's able to crack a password as it did right here, as you could see, uh, for this user Sam, I have a password of ABC123. And for this other user Will, I have a password of password. Uh, there is uh, another user, oh, password with capital P. Oh, I remember. I was going to type in complex password, but because I wanted to show you how it works, I, you know, made it simple. So as you could see, even a password like with a capital P, it took less than four minutes or three minutes to crack that password based on this hash. So once you have that information, you could decide whether you want to uh, implement a stronger password policy in your environment that is going to avoid users creating simple passwords like this one that I have here. As you could see, you know, if I only use the um, minimum password length, let's say that the most common password length the minimum password length is eight characters as you could see if i have the word password here that is eight characters long even if i have it you know capitalized but it is a common word and it is an easy uh, password to crack so um, I hope that this video was useful to you. I am going to follow up with a video of doing password audits on a domain controller, but it's going to be a similar process. Actually, it's going to be the same process, but we will be pointing to the domain controller. And in the meantime, please uh, uh, make it uh, your priority to implement uh, a strong password policy for your organization especially if you have any regulatory compliance HIPAA, PCI or you are following any of the other uh, cybersecurity frameworks NIST, ISO or anything else uh, implementing a strong passwords is a best practice and I will take it a step forward if you have the ability of implementing two-factor authentication, go for that because that's going to make the password even stronger. Because it is just a matter of time before even a strong password or complex password gets cracked. What the time is, it depends, right? But it is mathematically possible to crack a strong password. But if you add another layer to it and you make it multi-factor authentication, let's say that you use a, a key fab or you use a Google Authenticator that is going to create a new code every now, you know, every amount of time, it's going to be very difficult to crack that type of password. 
So I hope this information was useful to you. Again, if you found this information useful, just uh, click on the like button. I would really appreciate that. And if you can subscribe to my channel, I will also appreciate that. You have a great day and I'll talk to you on the next video.